Okay, today we're going to take a look at LVM snapshots. Now, I couldn't find a lot of information on how snapshots in LVM actually work. So they are copy on write logical volumes built in the same volume group of the source logical volume that you're taking a snapshot of. But how does it actually work? There's plenty of tutorials on how to take snapshots and how to use them for copying files or how to use them for restoring change data, so on and so forth. But how do they actually work? So let's do a quick high level overview of how these work. So this is kind of what's going on with our logical volume on root partition. So if we want to modify some data, we can change the color of some of the blocks and it changes on the logical volume. When we have a snapshot, we bring up the snapshot, it is created, and we can create whatever size we'd like, as long as that size will fit within our volume group. And right off the bat, all of the blocks within the snapshot logical volume are actually just pointing to the source logical volumes blocks. When we mount this, we can mount it to our snap directory. When we look at a file, it just points back to a block on the source disk. So what happens if we modify some data on the source disk? First, it gets copied over to the logical volume snapshot, as you see here. Then the data gets modified or written on that block and the pointer is removed. So now when we look at that snapshot, when we see that block or that inode or that file, it doesn't point back to the root logical volume. It has it in itself there. Okay, so we can modify some other data. Before we modify it, it gets copied over. The data is modified on the source logical volume and the pointer is removed. Now, what if we have some blank data, some new and unused blocks on the source disk? Well, those get copied over as blank blocks. They do consume space and the same thing occurs. So the pointers are removed. Whatever's in those blocks is copied over which would be nothing, and the logical volume on root is modified. So what can we do with a snapshot? Well, if we don't want to do anything with it, if we want to keep the changes that we've made to the root and logical volume, pretty simple, we just delete the snapshot. We delete the snapshot logical volume. It goes away, nothing else happens, we just delete it. And our root logical volume stays the same. But then what's the point in the snapshot? Well, if we keep our snapshot, and something goes wrong or we don't like the changes that we've made or we did some testing and we want to go back to the original state from when we took the snapshot we remove all the pointers and we copy the data back to the root volume and we're back to the original state now this has some caveats once you merge the snapshot with the root volume or your source logical volume that source logical volume can't be in use so in the case of a root logical volume you would have to reboot your machine once it's rebooted it also has to close once the copy is complete so you would have to reboot again in order for that to occur so depending on how much data there is to bring back from the snapshot into your root logical volume, you would reboot, which would initiate that copy. And then you would have to close the disk after the reboot, which would require another reboot to switch that data over. So let's show what we just saw in the presentation there. So we have here our data logical volume. We can see here, we have data and it is five gigabytes. And we have it mounted to the forward slash root data directory. And inside of there, 
we have a couple files. We have a 500 megabyte file, a 1000 megabyte file, and a text file. Let's take a look at the text file. This is a text file. So we can modify that text file very easily, just like you would in any other Linux system. We can VI it. We can insert some data. We can save it. It works as normal. So now let's take a snapshot of the data logical volume. We do that with a LV create. Let's specify the size. Now this can be any size. You can make it larger. You can make it smaller than the actual logical volume itself, as long as the size fits within the constraints of the volume group. So for this particular test, we will create it as a one gigabyte size. We'll use the S flag to indicate that this is going to be a snapshot. We'll use the N flag to name the snapshot logical volume. We'll call it data snap 01. Then we're going to specify which logical volume is going to be the source for this snapshot. And that is going to be the Ubuntu volume group or Ubuntu VG slash data logical volume. Okay, so now we have created this logical volume. So when we do LVS, we can see here that we have data snap 01. It is one gigabyte in size and its origin is the data logical volume here. So now let's mount this to our snap directory. Okay, so mount data snap01 to mount snap. So let's take a quick reminder. These are the files that we have in the data directory. Let's move to our snapshot that we just mounted and take a look at what is inside of there. It's the same files. Let's check what's inside that text file and it's the same as it was previously. So what happens if we modify some of the data in that text file? It's gonna go as the presentation indicated. It's going to copy that data into the snapshot. So we can see here now that we only have 0.01 of the snapshot logical volume consumed. So let's make a modification to our text file. And let's insert some text. So I'm just going to copy the lorem ipsum text and we'll paste it inside of there. We'll write the file. Okay, so now we can see that our text file is much larger. And we can see that our data percentage consumed has gone up. Not by much because it's one gigabyte and we've only consumed an additional two kilobytes of data. Now what we can do is we can take a look at the snapshot again. And we can see that the text file is still 37 bytes. These are two completely separate logical volumes where the snapshot is referencing the old, where the snapshot is referencing the source logical volume, but only where the data hasn't changed. Once data has changed, that data gets copied into the snapshot and that reference goes away and it is then referencing itself. So let's say you want to recover this file. It's just like any other mounted logical volume. You can just simply copy it. So we can remove our text file. So what we can do is just copy the file from the, lo the snapshot logical volume that we have mounted and copy it into our current directory. Okay, so there it is. It is 37 bytes and if we take a look at it, it no longer contains the lorem ipsum text. So this isn't a great example of how to use a snapshot because what if you've modified hundreds or thousands of files? Well, that also can be done with copying if you're up to that task, or we can use the option to 
merge. So what happens if we modify some of our data and we want to keep it modified? We don't want to revert it back and we have no use for the snapshot anymore. Well, like in the presentation, we can just delete it. Let's do that. So let's copy our lorem ipsum back in here. And we want to keep this data. It worked out the way we wanted it. We're happy. We no longer need our snapshot. So we can do that with LV remove and we list our snapshot. So if we take a look at our mount point, there's nothing in there anymore because removing the logical volume unmounted that mount point. If we were in the directory, it would give us an, an error saying that the directory is in use or the mount points in use. That's fine. You just back out of it or you manually unmount the, the logical volume. And then we can check out our logical volume and we can see that our data partition or our data volume is still there, but we no longer have a snapshot. And our text file is still there. And it's the same as when we modified it. So what happens if you want to recover this data? So let's recreate our snapshot. Okay, so our snapshot is back. And let's just say we accidentally delete the contents of our directory. So let's take a look at a couple MD5 sums. And let's remove them all. So now we no longer have our data there. So if we wanted to recover this whole snapshot, we want to revert back to it. We don't want the changes that we've made to stick for the entire logical volume that this snapshot is a destination for. We can use the LV convert merge option. And we're going to select the snapshot. We want to merge snapshot of one and it will automatically merge to the source logical volume that it is a snapshot for. So it gives us an error there saying that delaying the merge since the origin is open. So our source logical volume is currently open. So we need to unmount it and then remount it. So let's unmount. We have to be out of the data directory to unmount it. And we can see that our snapshot is gone. It's unmounted and it is removed. So we no longer have a snapshot. So we may need to refresh our logical volume and we can do that with an LV change. Refresh and the volume group's name, which is Ubuntu dash VG. So once that's done, let's mount our data partition again. And we'll navigate over there and we'll take a look at what's inside. There's our data. Let's do an MD5 sum. And we can see that our MD5 sums match as they were previously. So next, we'll take a look at another way to easily take snapshots without having to use commands. And that would be through webmin. Okay, so here's our webmin interface. Let's log in as our user. So cool little interface. I like webmin. But what we'll do is we will go to hardware, logic volume management, logical volumes and we can create here we can create a snapshot in ubuntu volume group 
So we'll name it snap. Snap a one. We'll put the absolute size as, let's just say it's something different, five gigabytes. Taking a snapshot of the source logical volume, the only one we have is Ubuntu LV. Click on create. That's it. There it is. You see that it's there. And the great thing about this is you don't need to really remember any commands. You can say rollback snapshot. Now the downside to this is when you click on rollback snapshot, it's not going to give you a warning that it's not going to roll back until the logical volume source is unmounted or closed. Uh, you should know about this before handling snapshots, but typically you would have another volume that isn't your root that you're taking a snapshot of uh, where you wouldn't need that. Or you can delete it. If we don't want it anymore, it doesn't need any warnings. You don't get any warnings. You don't have to do anything. You can just click on delete and it deletes it just like the commands in here. So let's take a look. So no snapshot. Let's create one. We'll create a five gigabyte snapshot. We'll name it snap five gigabytes. Create. There it is. And there it is there. Okay, we can click on it. We can see how much is in use. We can see how many blocks are allocated from the volume group. And if we wanted to, we could update this. So if we don't have auto increment turned on and we want to increase the size of it, we can come here and select gigabytes, you know, go to eight gigabytes instead. Okay, so let's just take a look at that. So it is currently five gigabytes. Let's increase it to eight. Click on save, come in here, and it's eight gigabytes. And we didn't need to do any commands. We didn't have to remember anything. Webmin is awesome for this type of stuff where you don't want to deal with making sure that you get the commands correct. This is a very simplified version of this, but it does work well and it does work efficiently, especially when you don't want to have to remember uh, commands and you don't want to have to go through the Google foo. You can just do, the, do this through the GUI. Okay, so I hope this helped you understand how snapshots work from a very high level and that you are able to use them with a little more confidence and I hope they help you in your future with running Linux or Ubuntu or whatever it is that you are using LVMN. Thanks for watching. Bye.